Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to set up double submitted cookies. This is an authentication method where you store the JWT token in both local storage and in the cookies. I'm going to start by doing a little demonstration of how it works and then I'll show you the code that powers this. So here's my cookies and you can see there's nothing in it right now and in my local storage it's blank. But what I'm going to do here is and I'm just going to uh, log in. And when I log in, you'll notice um, we get the token and refresh token filled for the local host or local storage, and in our cookies we have it. And if you were to look at these values, they would be the exact same. Um, the one that we're storing in the cookies versus the local storage. And that's the idea. Then if I go to some authenticated route, like slash book one, what will happen is I'll send uh, both the tokens from the cookies and the local storage. So if I go to network, I can see here's my request here. I can see here's the request headers. I'm sending the refresh token and the token, but I'm also sending the cookie, which has the token and the refresh token in it. So they're both being sent. And the reason for doing this is, for example, if I'm like some malicious JavaScript and I come over here and I come to local storage, and notice how we get I am a book here, it rendered just fine, we authenticated okay. Um, if I'm some malicious JavaScript and I come over here and I have access and I mess up your token, so I'm gonna mess up the token here, or maybe I don't mess up your token but I um, change the value and say you're an admin or something, or I change what the payload of the token is or try to mess it up or maybe I don't even like supply a token and refresh token at all these are not given then what will happen when I refresh the page is we'll actually get an error we'll say page not found and in our console it says not authenticated and the reason for that is because the tokens differ between the cookie and the local storage and the basic idea here is every time we do a request we send both the cookie tokens and the local storage tokens and the server compares the values and if they're not the same then we don't accept it basically. So now I'll show you the code that has this working. So here is the client side code. This is the React code that powers the website and you can see I'm using GraphQL here and the cookies part is super easy. This is the only option that I have to do. Um, when I create the network interface, I just say options, credentials, include, and then I can set and send cookies um, using GraphQL and using the Apollo client, and all the work for cookies is done on the server side, so I don't have to do anything. And here, this is how I'm doing local storage. Every time I send out a request, all I'm doing is I'm prepending the X token and X refresh token to the header, and I'm just grabbing the values from local storage. And then after uh, I get a request, I'm just checking whether they send back a refresh token and refresh token. And if they do, I just set that in local storage. And that's it. That's going all. That's all that's going happening on the client side. Now I'll show you the server. So here is the server code. Um, here is my function called add user. So this runs on every request, and this is middleware. And I show you. I'll show you guys that right here. And before we actually get into add user, I guess I can talk about the cores and the cookie parser. So cookie parser is something that I got right here. And all this does is it lets you um, get the cookies from a request and then lets you check what the values are. So you know how we were sending them here? It just let, like parses them out and lets you use them in Express. And I'll show you where that's happening. So that is a library that just parses the cookies for you. So that's what's going on here and you'll notice how in the cores I have to set the credentials true and I have to say what the origin is and the origin there matches up to this right here and the reason for that is just to get cookies working you have to do say what the origin is coming from and the credentials um, and then we are parsing the cookie and then add user so now how add user is working here is I'm grabbing the token from the header this is X token so that's coming from local storage I first check if there's a token you know given if not we just go to the next thing um, then I see if the, I was given a cookie so I grab the cookie token and I check whether I was given a cookie token if I was not I say next and I also check whether the token is equal to the cookie token and if they're not equal I say well this is a bad request next and then here I go ahead and verify 
um, the JWT token since the tokens match. We've gotten this far in the, the logic, so the tokens are good. Um, and if I can't verify the tokens, I read the refresh token. And again, just checking whether the refresh token is there. If not, we go to the next. And if the refresh or the cookie refresh token was given as well, I check that uh, against the refresh token. And if they're not equal, I return. And then down here, let's say this all went correctly. To refresh tokens, what I'm doing is I'm creating new tokens. Um, and then after I create the new tokens, um, this is how I'm passing it back to local storage. I'm putting in X token and X refresh token header, and then I'm reading the header in. So that's what these guys are doing here, just setting that. And then to set a cookie with express, I'm doing it right here. Um, I'm doing response.cookie, and I'm naming the, the cookie called token, and I'm putting the token in there, and then I'm giving it a max age. The max age here is uh, a week, and that is just matching um, what I have for auth. So auth over here, I have the refresh token lasting seven days. Um, so I was having the cookie match the same length of time. Okay, I'm also doing HTTP only, and the, the reason for that is that way, if I have a malicious JavaScript that is um, you know, changing the token in local storage, I don't want it changing the cookie uh, value. And so when I do HTTP only, JavaScript on your website cannot change the value of the token. So it's very important to keeping this secure, is having that HTTP only. So that's the reason why that's there, and that's what makes this whole thing work. And I'm doing the same thing for the token and the refresh token. So anytime we need to refresh the token, I send back new tokens to the user. So that's how that's working. And the only other thing I'm doing here is in the resolver, when the user logs in, I'm returning the token and refresh token so they can add it to local storage, but I'm also setting the cookie as well. And this is the same logic as well. So just the response, I'm doing dot cookie, and I have the refresh token and the token as well, and passing it in. So that, that's it guys for this video. The main thing is just to check whether the cookie matches the um, local storage token and those match up. And if they don't, something went wrong and you just say they're not authenticated. Um, for me, where I'm not saying not authenticated is I don't actually throw any errors here. You notice I just say next. This is where I add the user in. So if they didn't supply a token, I just assume that they're not a user on the website and they haven't logged in, which is fine. So that is how I'm doing double submit cookies. Um, the code is in the description below. I have a link to GitHub where you can check this out for both the front end and back end and see how this is working and try it out if you want to. So thank you guys for watching and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.